Rear. Good morning, everyone. It's Phil Wade from Dalton Wade Real Estate, and I'm joined today with Dwayne. Good morning. Aaron. Good morning. Steve, <laughs> you got to take over the camera. Good Dwayne, Aaron, Good morning. Steve. Yeah. All righty. Thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in and, uh, and joining us today. So today we're going to talk about um, you know trying to uh, up uh, up your listing business. Um, you know, folks who have listened to me before know uh, listings are kind of the life lifeblood of uh, any real estate agent's business. Um, you know, when you're working with a buyer, um, it's nice, don't get me wrong, but um, I kind of call it you're in the shadows. Nobody knows you have that buyer except that buyer. Um, you can't go on vacation because then that buyer's not going to buy anything. Um, so buyers are good, but listings are, are better. Um, when you have a listing, um, you know, you have your sign out front, uh, you have your listing up on Zillow and, and all, the, uh, all the real estate portals. Uh, people can contact you directly. Uh, you can do open houses. So what ends up happening if you work that listing correctly is that um, I call it the multiplier effect. You'll, you'll sell that listing, but then if you're doing it right, you'll also meet some buyers basically for free. You don't have to pay Zillow to give you buyers. You've met them um, through your efforts. So um, listings can be very, very profitable. So um, the only thing better than listings are, are expensive listings because then you meet, you know, buyers that are shopping at a, at a higher price point. So where do you, where do you find listings when you're, when you're first, you know, when you're first starting out? So, um, you know, kind of the tried and true, um, you know, kind of realtor uh, prospecting is through either expired listings or, you know, for sale by owner. So, Let's start with, uh, you know, with for sale by owner and see if we can understand them a little bit better, what their motivation is and how you can potentially, uh, you know, work with them. So for sale by owners, uh, typically, um, and before I jump into that, let me let me talk about different types of for sale by owner. So, um, so there's a for sale by owner who has a yard sign. That person is, um, that's all the marketing they're doing. They put a sign out in front of their house um, and they expect to sell their home off of that sign. So, um, you know, their marketing is very, very uh, limited. Um, they're probably not getting a lot of people. Um, the next group would be yard sign plus um, Zillow and Craigslist. So they're, they are out there doing some marketing on some free, free websites. They're getting some exposure. Um, they're probably getting more exposure today than they did five years ago, you know, with the popularity of, of Zillow. But, um, and, and again, that's kind of um, the extent of, you know, their efforts. So with that, they're probably maybe reaching, you know, 30% of the buyers that possibly are out there. And then the last group would be doing the yard sign, Zillow, Craigslist, and then they've got their listing up on MLS. So um, you can be a for sale by owner and um, put your listing uh, on the MLS through what's called a limited service agreement. So that's either uh, flat fee that you paid a broker or it's sometimes referred to as entry only it can be as low as $99 I've seen and you know 99 199 249 um, puts their listing um, up on the MLS um, and then distribute it out to you know all the websites so at that point they have pretty good exposure but what they might be lacking is um, just kind of the marketing the photography how they've written up um, you know their their listing so depending on where that person is in sort of their marketing efforts kind of dictates how you know um, you know how you you might approach them so let's let's talk a little bit more um, so again where do, where do you find the for sale by owners you can find them um, you can do a sort on MLS um, uh, by limited service agreement and, and see what comes up and see what it says uh, you can look on Craigslist for their phone number, and, and you can look on you can look on Zillow, um, and then you know lob lob a phone call into them. Now again, the mentality of the for sale, but there's only one real reason why they're um, they're doing it there themselves. It's it's the money. They don't want to pay the commission. Uh, they don't see the value of um, you know paying um, you know a listing agent to put their put their property up on. Um, the MLS. 
Sometimes some for sale by owners will not pay a commission at all. They don't. They won't work with a buyer's agent. They want to be 100% for sale by owner. Um, you know, God, God love them and good luck to them. So um, the other group would be they don't want to pay the listing agent other than that flat fee, but they are willing to pay a buyer's agent. So um, kind of determining what what category they fall into, you know, will be helpful when you're when you're speaking to them. Um, and then there's also a group, um, and this doesn't really have to do anything with the commission per se, but uh, no matter what you tell them, they, they want nothing to do with us. So basically they've had a bad experience somewhere along the line in working with the realtor um, and, and um, there's, they're not crackable, meaning there's just no matter what you propose to them, you're not getting your business. So identify those types quickly and, and move on. And if they give you, you know, any 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 flack just you know say hey you know I apologize for calling you and, and just just move on the other group um, you know is somewhere in between where um, you know they will eventually give up their listing or they are open to you know some ideas in terms of how somebody can help them so again you know why they're not doing it is because of the Commission so it's hard it's not impossible but it's hard to call them um, and then propose the six percent. I mean, that's they're they're it's it's difficult, you know, to get them, um, you know, again based on um, the fact that they just don't see, you know, the value. And unfortunately, what happens with the for sale by owner mindset is that, you know, say their house is three three hundred thousand, you know, the commission is six percent. They just think no matter what, eighteen thousand, you know, they're losing. When in fact you probably sell their house for more than they will. Um, so it's not really the commission they're paying, it's kind of what they get at closing that really counts. So, um, so that's something to mention to them. But again, many of them are much more open to some type of reduced um, you know, commission um, you know, so that it's easier to get them. And then you know, why you would reduce your commission um, is because you're, you're thinking, okay, um, you know, I'm going to meet some other buyers through that effort, and therefore I'm going to get, you know, paid that way. So if you think about it, you know, you're paying Zillow $1,000 a month, you know, to sort of give you leads. Um, this way, you're actually, in, an es in, in essence, paying that home seller. You're not paying them, but you've reduced your commission to get in there to get those leads and that exposure to those buyers. And so, I mean, my last, my last three buyer transactions um, two of them came off of open houses so they definitely work um, you know there's a whole strategy around how to actually convert them off of the open house but um, if you don't have an open house to do um, obviously you can't you can't meet people so um, so the um, you know so you've got to offer them something of value um, and the value is on your commission so again um, you know, questions like, are you on the MLS? Um, if, if they're on the MLS, it's a little bit harder because they say, well, what are you going to do for me that I'm not already doing? The big thing there, and we'll talk about this a little bit further around the expired listings, is that you're going to you're going to um, you're going to re represent their their listing. You're going to you know put it in, and, and the photography is going to be in such a way. Um, you know that it's going to bring more people, and then that person, um, you know, is going to be the one one that's. Up. I've had probably when I was working up in Boston, I probably had six or seven listings where they had put it in the the MLS themselves. I re uh, repositioned it, rephotographed it, and I sold it. You know, within less than a month. So sometimes just that kind of relaunch. You know, people think of it from, you know, people looking on the internet. When they look on the internet and, and they see something that doesn't look so good, which is often what, you know, that home seller, that for sale by owner presents, um, they just don't get, they don't get the traffic. So, um, but offering them something of value, i.e. the commission, and then in terms of how, you know, how far, how much discounting you want to do um, is up to you as, you know, the individual agent. Um, also, just to keep in mind, some that are stubborn, um, you may propose the limited service agreement. Um, again, you're not, we did that for, um, hey Jan, how's it going? Real good, how's it going? Good to see you. Good to see you too. Oh, 
Hi, everybody. <laughs> Good morning. Hi. How are you? <laughs> All right, we got Dwayne, Steve, and Aaron. Yeah, right. <laughs> Jan. So Jan, Jan can talk about the, uh, we're talking about, you know, meeting people at open houses. Tell oh. when you first started. Yes, yes. Uh, open houses, I uh, think, are huge to uh, get new clientele. Um, you know, uh, when you do an open house, uh, you want to uh, meet the people, of course, show them the house. And the, one of the first things that I ask them is if they have a realtor. So if that answer is no, then I sell myself. You know, it has to be a good fit for both uh, parties. And uh, I've, uh, I've done very well with open houses and actually got three, set, three uh, new clients from one open house. So. Yeah, and that was one we had off of. Is that the one in Kenwood? Yeah, yeah. in Kenwood. I did it uh, every week for several weeks and uh, met uh, three uh, buyers and uh, sold them houses. So open houses are a great thing to do. Yeah, that, that listing she's talking about was a listing that I had and was a limited service. I was just putting it in, you know, the guy had agreed. I put it in for like $250. He let me do, you know, the open houses and Jan ended up conducting them, so mm -hmm. good things came out of it. So, Absolutely. again, when you a lot of times, like you know, agents will try to do an, an open house for like another agent, where that can go wrong is that agent doesn't promote the open house correctly, so that you know, you don't get the traffic this way. If you have control of the listing, then you're in charge of you know, of ultimately promoting it, and you know, you get that. And we've talked about this before, you get that out there early. Um, you know, you enhance it on Zillow, truly and realtor.com and, you know, um, get your signage out and, you know, get some, get some people through. So, um, so it all ties in listings and then your strategy of, um, you know, kind of working, working open houses. So that's a little bit on for sale by owner. Um, you know, I'd love to, you know, anybody want to have a conversation offline? I'm certainly open to, you know, to chatting, um, you know, about that. We have scripts, um, um, but really, the, the the bottom line in all this is actually you know, execution. It's it's doing it. It's it's getting yourself you know in a mindset where each day you're making those ten calls. You know you you are committed to it. it takes about an hour a day, maybe a little bit more. You're not going to get everybody. You know the people you do get sometimes they're not going to be ready right now. You know you you leave you end the call with you know can I check back in a few weeks and see how you're doing. You gotta. Hit them kind of when they're when they're ready, but um, it does work. I mean, it's it's worked for me consistently over the years. Um, the next one is expired listings, which is another great source um, for um, you know for prospecting. Now those folks have already had their listing in the MLS, and then you know based on what you see, um, you probably can conclude they were paying you know the five or six percent. So. The discounting of the commission isn't quite as you know critical on that because they've already you know they've already paid that to someone else. Now it's like okay, why didn't their listing sell, and how you and how can you help them get it sold? The biggest one I see is is again it's around the photography bad. I mean we've all seen listings where the listing agent you know took it with his camera phone, um, you know or they did it with a digital camera, but all the exposures are different. Um, they, they took them at night, the people's house didn't look good. All that stuff, you know, people when they're searching, you know, you have a very limited time to catch their attention. You know, they look and then they say, oh, that, that doesn't look so good, on to the next house. And what ends up happening is you don't get the traffic through. So, you know, the first step is you gotta get them to the house to sell them the house. And if you, you're having trouble meeting them, you know it's harder so that's something to key in on that you know again you have to convince that person on the other end of the phone that you know what you do is better than what was done before that that's you can help them get their house sold while you know the other agent you know basically you know was unsuccessful so check the photos and then you know if they don't look so great really key in on that and you know commit to using a professional like on Jan's listings, she always uses, you know, a professional photographer. I mean, it, it definitely helps. Um, it makes, and again, you're, you're, you gotta think in terms of you're, you're using the professional photographer to get more people, to meet more people, you know, to have that multiplier effect um, so that that listing, again, gave you, um, you know, that, that listing gave you more than just the sale of that. So, um, 
you know, it's, it's, it, it works. I mean, it's just, again, it's, it's doing it. It's actually committing each day, you know, or, you know, um, you know, two day, two hours every other day, whatever your strategy is, but it's, you know, this is about a year ago, some, someone was sitting right in the Steve, seat Steve was sitting in, and uh, we were talking about this, and she basically said that, uh, you know, calling did not work. And I said, well, what are you talking about? Should I call 20 people and it doesn't work? 20 people is not really anything. That's, you know, she quit before she started. So you gotta call really 200 people, you know, to get one or two listings. And again, if you think about it, you know, it's, it's you know, you can call 200 people, you know, 10 an hour, it's 20 hours, you know, you got a listing and maybe a buyer out of it. It's, it's very profitable, profitable use you know, of, of your time. So you, you, you know, doing this, you know, and get, then as you do more of it, you, you basically get, you know, get good at it. So there are sources out there that um, the Red X uh, is one that comes to mind that basically will provide you with the phone numbers for the expired listings. Um, it's a service that all, it's open to all agents. So it's not like you exclusively have these numbers, um, but again, it does make your job a little bit easier. You can go through it quicker. Um, you know, on both the for sale by owner and uh, expired listings, look on look on YouTube. There's 50 videos on each topic. You know, from agents telling you, you know, their success stories. So, um, see what they say. See what they say. There's some live calls out there. You know, develop your own. You know, and then just sort of get in the mode of, of calling. And then the last one is some alternative strategies, um, you know, not as conventional. So basically there's a lot of, you know, everybody's seen them, you know, we pay cash, um, you know, for your house, um, you know, we buy ugly um, They do incredible, you know, uh, marketing every month and they get, um, you know, a ton of leads in. Um, so the idea here is that they, they need to buy the house um, at 70% of its market value. So they're, they're basically, they're low ballers in essence, and, and what ends up happening is that they will, out of 100 people, they will find someone that will do that because they need the cash right now. And, and then they're able to so, sort of go from there. Now, those other you know 99 leads, if somebody that called them inquiring about selling their house, might be so you might partner with someone like that you know to sort of get the leads that don't you know don't work out for them come up with some type of compensation plan and you know go from there so if you see any of those signs you just call them i mean you know the guys in real estate i mean you never know you might you know you might pick up a client that way um, it, again all this is all about talking to people you've got to like if you're a real estate agent you know you you have to talk to people about real estate. I mean, that's what we do. You know, there are, you know, if, if you're sitting home and you're not calling or, to, you know, it's, it's difficult to get your, your business going. So you have to feel comfortable on the phone. Um, and, you know, it gets, it gets easier as, as time goes on. But, you know, investing that time, it will definitely pay dividends. So any, any questions? When is, a good, when is a good time to do uh, open, open houses? When is the best time to do open houses? Um, I mean, I like Sunday, which tends to be the better day because yeah. that seems to be the day most people do it. I mean, I think some, I mean, not some, but a lot of people do go to church. I like to do them, you know, like if the bucks are on, you know, you might do it before, you know, if they're on at four, you might do it, you know, at one, one to two thirty. I don't believe in long open houses. I like to do them for about an hour and a half. What, it, what ends up happening is if you do it for like, sometimes people do them for three hours, you know, you still get the same amount of people, but then it doesn't look like anybody's ever there. This way, if you do them in a kind of a consolidated time, it kind of creates a little bit of a, a little bit of a buzz. Um, so I like one to 2.30, two to 3.30. Um, the key really is the promotion of it, that you actually didn't like wait till Friday or Saturday to put it into MLS. You did that early in the week. Uh, maybe you did some promoting, you know, on Zillow. You changed the remarks to kind of promote the open house, and you did all that early so that, you know, someone searching, say, on Wednesday saw it and then says, oh, I'm going to go to that, as opposed to they searched and it wasn't there till Friday. So, you know, the ideal number of people at an open house is about six to eight. That way, you know, you've got a little bit of time to spend with each one. Um, 
again, you don't want to be on top of these people when they're in the open. You know, you, you greet them, you get their contact information, and then you kind of back off. You let them, you know, do their thing, walk around, and then typically you'll get a sense as to kind of when they're about to leave. You can ask them, you know, do you have any questions, um, and then try to engage them. And try to find out what they're, you know, what they're doing in their search, and then how, how you can help them. Um, you know, it, it, so it's a question on yeah. the Periscope. Uh, what if you get a phone number for FISBO, but they're on the do not call list? Um, well, you know, personally, I would call them. Uh, that's a decision you can make. I mean, again, if if they, um, you know, if you ever get any like flack. You know, just to, just apologize. I mean, you know, most everybody um, is good with that, um, and then make a note not to call them again. I mean, I think if you call somebody more than once, then you know you're you're you know leaving yourself liable. But um, so that's kind of my thoughts on that. Any other uh, questions on Periscope? No. I've got one. Yeah. Um, have you uh, or any of your agents do they use door knocking? Um, in conjunction with open houses, like prior to, to kind of generate a buzz with neighbors or anything like that. I mean, I've heard, I've, I've heard that technique. I've just wondered. I've yet to meet somebody that actually does it. So I wondered if it's just one of those things you hear on the internet, but they're not. You know, it's not a legitimate. Here's the thing tactic. about. Here's the thing about door knocking. At least in my opinion, and we can all chime in. You know, when you start as a real estate agent, you, um, you. Um, you're under the gun, basically, is how I look at it, because you're under the gun for failure, right? There's a very, very high attrition rate in this business. Door knocking is something that might yield fruit, you know, in two years. The idea behind door knocking is you knock on their door, you meet them, and then when they're ready to actually sell their house in the future, they remember you. Or you've met them and then you've done some other marketing, you have a bench or um, you sent out some flyers, you know, just sold, and then when they're ready to sell in the future, they contact you. I'm about today because today I need to feed my kids. I don't need to be getting transactions two years out in the future because I may, I may not last that long. So, you know, calling, um, you know, like there are some firms that tell people, oh, call the phone book. No, you want to, the, the people here, Craigslist, Zillow, the ex those folks have already shown a propensity to sell their house, right? They're, they're, they're doing something. So they're just a much better candidate. So, you know, you want to spend your time to get the most bang for your buck, you know, right now. So um, I'm not a fan of door knocking. I've never done that. And I mean, I, I, I can see how it works maybe long term, but I'm much more about like here and now. I have a question yeah. for you. So uh, one of the ladies, and I want you to answer this, and we'll see if your answer matches what <laughs> I told her. One of the ladies on my team, she, uh, I'm trying to coach her into calling some of the uh, FISBOs, and her concern was the ones that she's seen on Craigslist or whatever said they didn't want any agents to call. So therefore, it scared her away from making that call. And what would you say to them? people out there in Periscope. <laughs> I would say um, if it specifically says on the Craigslist, I mean, you know, there's the, the standard Craigslist do not, you know, do not solicit with commercial interest. Uh, that doesn't count for me. <laughs> but if somebody says specifically no agents contact me, then, then you probably should contact them. But if it doesn't say that, then I think, you know, calling them is certainly, that's <laughs> kind of how I would do it. What, what do you think? Well, um, personally, <laughs> you would call. I would probably call. Yeah, you know, it's because of the reason why that I would call is because at 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 some point that homeowner may be frustrated and, and they probably already had other agents calling. But if you you know call and not take up too much of their time and show that you're different or try to sell yourself in a different way and not be so aggressive, then it may work out for you. But that's just my personal. Because a lot of them say, do not call. Agents do not call. The majority of them. Yeah, I mean, I, again, you have to remember they are, you know, every agent's taught to call these same people, right? Mm -hmm. So, again, they're getting that, you know, 6% pitch, and they're not interested. So, if you're able to pitch them on something different, they may be open to kind of mm -hmm. what you have to say. I mean, you got to, again, you know, hopefully you're thinking outside the box, you know. Um, Again, understanding 
you know, how the entry only factors in, you know, because again, um, um, I mean, here Dalton Wade is certainly fine to, you know, have, you know, put up an entry only listing if, if that's what the person wants with the, you know, with the hope and then kind of the understanding is that you're going to do the open houses and, you know, you're getting, I mean, $249 is not a lot of money, but you're, you know, you're meeting buyers basically for free. That's, that's the goal. You're not paying Zillow. You're not paying me. You know, you're, you're doing that on your own and um, it works. So that's, that's kind of, you know, so you got to think, okay, how can I get that listing? I do to sort of to get that so um. there's another question on periscope uh question about photography how many photos are a good idea how much are too much um i mean i think you know it depends on the house certainly a bigger home you can go 25 i like you know two or three exterior shots and then you know two to a room and then maybe for the kitchen if it's a nice kitchen three or four so whatever that adds up. So, you know, somewhere between maybe, you know, 15 and 25 is a good good number. I mean, you want to make that listing, you know, look good. Um, you want to, um, unfortunately, you know, kitchen sell. Uh, in, when I worked in Boston, that MLS allowed us to put the kitchen you know, as the first photo. So, you know, rather than the here, I did that and I got one of those compliance emails. Uh, so you can't, you can't do that. But, you know, it can be the second photo. You want to get right into, you know, that's usually the number one thing that turns people on. So you want to show that quickly, have three or four photos of that. Putting that, you know, putting that listing together with the photography, um, you know it's key and then same with the write-up you know that's the first thing you want to you know you want to have them read I mean you don't want to be showing you know the bedrooms I mean we've all look at listings see what you like and you know see which ones you think oh that caught my eye and then if, when you have a listing do it do it similarly Any? yeah there's a question about uh, how best to advertise open homes okay well the best way is to um, you know, There's basically under the you know add edit function it'll say open house you'll come up with a screen you make it public you make it active and you put the time in and then you hit save and then you know what I what I've done is then I go into um, you know Zillow uh, Trulia and Realtor.com and I I put the open house right in the beginning of the remarks so that people read that first in case they because sometimes they might not see the open house icon. Um, but that's that's really all you got to do when people people will find it um, you might do you know you want to have enough signage so that you know people can see it um, you might do some balloons I mean again that's up to you the idea of getting you know pulling people in off the street um, you know they may they're probably not going to buy the house but you've actually you know met somebody that you know took the time to come so um, but you know the the primary way is by posting it on the MLS. Okay, that's it for questions. All right, last chance for questions. Anybody here? Anybody on Periscope? All right, thanks for tuning in, and we'll be back. Oh, here's one. Up. Um, well, Facebook is, um, again, you know, you can do some, I mean, you can do a posting if you have your own Facebook page. Uh, when we, um, on the Dalton Way page, we post our open houses, and then you can goose it up a little bit more by spending like $25, um, you know, to do um, a sponsored ad around that post. Okay. So it just gets a little bit. All right. Anybody else? All right, guys, thanks for tuning in, and we'll be back uh, next Saturday. Thank you so much. How do you combat requests to lower commissions? It's the last, last um, question. You know, that's a tough one. Um, you know, it, it really depends on, um, 
Well, Jan, how would you do that? Well, I, um, <laughs> on one of my listings that I haven't done even, they uh, tried to get me to go down to 2% or, or, you know, well, we're not supposed to talk percentage. But anyway, I just sold myself that I was going to do a good job. I'm going to help come in and help you. You know, I we do light staging and, you know, I help you, you know, move the things around in your house and make it look better and things like that. So just all the extra things that I was going to do and that I was going to work hard for that uh, percentage that I was asking for. So, and I, I got what I wanted. So sometimes you just have to stand firm and if it doesn't work, then sometimes you have to go down a little. And we have a comment that staging is very important. Yes. That was a good, good mention. <laughs> staging is very important. I mean, it helps on two levels. It helps when somebody's in the house. And it also helps with your photography, which helps get people there. Um, just again, kind of following up on Jan, um, you know, when you're in that conversation with the homeowner, um, here's, you know, here's a true story. This agent, um, he joined about six months ago, Bob. I don't know if he's watching right now, but at his previous firm, they had a mentor, and he went out with the mentor for the listing presentation, and then, you know, the, the uh, homeowner said, um, you know, can you do anything on the commission? And, you know, Bob was ready to, everybody wants a break, right? I mean, it's kind of, you know, human nature. So the mentor said no. And then he said, well, can you do something for me? And he said no. And they didn't get it. And he walked out. So, you know, you got to be flexible, you know, if you can get it. But sometimes if people are pushing back on you, you know, you might, you know, you might say, well, what, what's it going to take? You know, and you put it out to them. There's an old saying like, you know, whoever talks first loses. So you make them tell you what they're thinking and then, you know, maybe you can counter them a little bit and, you know, come to an agreement. You you want, especially if it's a good listing, the more you want that listing. I mean, because it's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's hopefully going to, you know, provide some buyers for you. That's, that's kind of how you have to be thinking about it. So there were some comments about... Uh one, one person mentioned a specific percentage rate that they were willing to go down to. Um, another one mentioned that if, uh, if you don't have, if he felt if you didn't have confidence in your, uh, in, in the listing percentage, then they wouldn't have confidence in you selling the house. So just comments like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you just, Every situation's different, so you just have to kind of feel it out, and you know. And again, it, at the end of the day, you as the agent, you have to be happy. You have to feel that you know you're being compensated fairly, because there is some work, um, you know. And, and you kind of go from there. The other one, you know, we didn't have a question on this, but I think it's worth mentioning is okay. So then, you know, the other thing you end up talking about is what to list the house for. And then you might have your opinion, and um, their opinion, meaning the sellers, might be, you know, higher, right? So then, okay, then what do you do? Again, it's a judgment call. If it looks like it's way high, um, you might not take it. If it looks like, you know, I mean, why would you take it? Well, you would take it because you don't, they don't know you, and you really don't know them. But what happens over time is you get to know them a lot better. They kind of almost become your friend. They will become your friend. And then there might, they don't tell you, meaning the home seller, they don't tell you everything in the beginning. You know, there might be something going on in their life where they'll lower it. You know, maybe they just want to see. But if you never took it in the beginning, you never got to the point where they could lower it. So, again, it's one of those kind of judgment calls that, um, you know, if, I always kind of err on the side of taking it, um, you know, and then kind of hoping some good things. Nothing good can come out of it if you don't take it. And somebody mentioned an opinion that they felt that uh, competing realtors that lowered their commission rates were uh, watering down the whole situation for everybody. Well, that's actually a bad comment because um, rates are competitive. That's called right. antitrust. So right. somebody else watering, that's their choice. There's nothing we can do about it. You know, again, um, we're all trying to make money, uh, but we need to provide value, um, you know, to our clients. That's why they work with us. Again, you know, if somebody could just sell the house themselves and kind of, you know, get more money, well, who's not going to do that, right? So you've actually got to provide value. You've got to, you know, do things that, I mean, it's like, you know, getting a commission, it's not like somebody just rained money down on us. It's called work, 
you mm -hmm. know, right? So yeah. you can't really forget that. But you know, um, you know, commissions are, you know, there's a lot of options out there for the home seller. You know, we talked about the, they can do it themselves. There's putting it on, you know, the flat fee. Know, for folks so it's important to understand those options so you kind of know what's going on in the marketplace okay all right anybody else last call thanks so much for tuning in okay there you go thank you